really isn't anything at all that we talk about that even comes close to uh, to matching just the the pain that suicide uh, causes but also just the sadness that I feel for somebody who feels so trapped and feels so pain that they take their own life you know the story of Chris Cornell and now one of his good friends in life Chester Bennington who was the lead singer from Lincoln Park uh, ended his life by suicide as well. He, like Chris Cornell, had suffered from addictions and suffered from mental health problems. And like Chris Cornell, uh, at this time, at this moment, uh, for him, the thing that made the most sense was ending his pain. And that's just so heartbreaking. And I, I wish in 2017 we understood the idea of suicide better than we do. And he, he unlike Chris Cornell, gave off all kinds of signs. Uh, not to suggest for a second that people ignored those signs, but everybody knew that he was suffering from depression. Listen to uh, the lyrics from uh, his second to last single uh, called Heavy. It was released in February, and uh, these words pretty much tell the story of what he was thinking. I don't like my mind right now. I don't like my mind Stacking right now. Problems that are so unnecessary. Problems that are so that unnecessary. Wish that I could slow Wanna things down. Want to let go of this discomfort and panic. Man, that just sums up everything um, that many of us feel. Uh, and that's what pushes you to the edge is the inability to shut down your brain, the negative thoughts that keep coming. And um, just so sad about this because, uh, of, I mean, I never met the guy. I don't know the guy. And whether I liked his music or not, and most of us do like the music that Linkin Park has done. It just, it's just so, it's so horrible to think of the pain that he must have gone through. Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, he, uh, one of his bandmates said, I remember Chester walked in and it was, hey, how are you doing today? He said to him and he said, oh, I'm fine. And we were hanging out for a minute and then he said, you know what? I have to be honest, I'm not fine, I'm not okay. Too much stuff is just happening to me. I feel like I'm underwater. Doesn't that really describe it so well? I don't, I don't know what we learn from this. I don't know how we take the 5,000 Canadians that take their lives every year and the 50,000 Americans and all those attempts that go in that. What do we learn from it? I've asked this question before, but it just, it just haunts me. What do we learn from suicide and how can we use what we learn to try to prevent it from happening? And the key lies in people who have attempted to take their own life. What were you thinking and what could have talked you down from the ledge? I, 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 I would like to solve this, but I just want a small hint as to why people do it. Uh, Chester Bennington, uh, no more or less important than any of the others um, that will, I was gonna say come and go, but will go uh, because mental health uh, is painful. And sometimes the thought of living is just more frightening than the thought of dying. Uh, there was some reaction to this and I wanna talk about it tomorrow because it just shows that the stigma still lives. Signalweek.com, 24 hours a day, 364 days a year. We're here because um, as Chester Bennington uh, said in life and in death, um, it hurts.